Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph, ushering you into Friday the 13th. All sorts of fun events are happening tonight and throughout the weekend. I'll talk to you more about that later in the show. I also have a brand new dub and stuff from the uh, 1950s movie uh, uh, Target Earth. Uh, I also have some fun things with uh, pre-critic or a pre-treasure movie based on absolutely uh, pre pre uh, preconceived notions, notions and nos ugh, geez, words today. It's Friday. Let's get started. Kicking things off with your city council, we're talking a little bit about more about rezoning and Muskan Gully Dol uh, Muskan Gulch development is looking for some city rezoning for uh, allow up to a uh, 248 lot major subdivision annexing about 41 acres and rezoning property located near 1660 Remo Road in Missoula. So if we take actually a look over here, um, I have a rendering of the picture that I'll be, they'll be definitely be talking about in more detail during my uh, <coughs> uh, clips that I'm going to be showing you guys. But just to kind of get a, uh, an idea, Hillview Way kind of goes here. You got Missoula Alliance Church just right here and a lot of undeveloped property right here is looking to be developed for this particular uh, stance. And we get a little bit of a history lesson when it comes to SIDs, so Special Improvement Districts, which was a very popular thing in Missoula before they had the inclusion of TED, which is Tax Increment Financing, or TIFs, sorry, TIFs, my bad. Um, Tara Vasari, uh, Development Services, presented on the Wild Root uh, development, and this is what uh, she had to say about that. With seven total phases. Phase one has already begun with some of the multifamily development and is slotted to have final plat by the end of 2026. Then the final phase seven is planned to be completed by the end of 2044. So, assuming all goes well, the full subdivision build out will be complete in 20 years. Each phase includes full roadway improvements, complete easements, um, any dedicated parkland mentioned common area improvements and other associated stormwater and utility infrastructure. All conditions of approval are also, of course, required prior to the timeline stated in the staff report, many of which um, are obviously tied to a specific phase of the development. Okay. And so there's a little taste of what you guys can expect uh, from those. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, Pando Holding is the developer that is looking to create houses in this area with a promise to create green lands for parks per the zoning request in the city uh, overlay ordinance. The square unit with the uh, rezoning will reduce the minimum from 8,000 square feet to 5,400 square feet per dwelling unit. The nice thing about this hill is that 0.2% chance of flooding. The total number of housings will be roughly 248 to 400 dwelling units total in terms of farmland slash grazed land. The land itself has not been used for 40 years and has not seen the amount of wildlife to justify a corridor for our wild neighbors. Uh, Kylie Wilson from Pando talks about their plans in this uh, tailor-made statement. Throughout Montana, housing affordability has become a significant issue facing state and local leadership. As you are well aware, Missoula is not exempt from this reality. Building more housing is crucial to making homes more attainable across the board. Um, the pursuit of this project began years ago. One of our first meetings was a call with key city officials where we outlined a vision that included apartments, townhomes, and single family. The encouragement we received affirmed that this site was a priority and aligned with the city's growth and housing policies. Today, we are not just planning, but have 203 apartments under construction with the first wave of residents having moved in last month. From the outset, our vision has been consistent. The initial plans we floated to the city laid the foundation for what we present to you today. Okay. And yeah, like I said, it's pretty much the same uh, old tale of development being developed based on the demand of Missoula going on right now. Um, I've heard plenty of times Missoula is under so many projects, firms like the ones out of Colorado really s uh, sow their oats in our community as we expand. Good or bad, more housing stock, more options and vacancies help better negotiate price points. This is a long-term plan which is slated to be completed by 2020, uh, 2044, mind you. Zach Graham, designer based out of Bozeman, Montana, spoke on behalf of development, talks about the areas uh, they'll keep green and a little bit more about some of the green spaces. There are 21.9 acres 
of common open space and over 14,000 lineal feet or 2.65 miles of new trail all open to the public and maintained by the HOA. Moose Kangoli is preserved and adjacent to a proposed park space totaling 7.78 acres. There is an eight foot wide pathway that will connect to an existing underpass and provide walking or biking access to the park space from the south. Aligning with the city vision to see this property developed for housing, the project creates 203 multifamily units that are already under construction, 21 townhome lots, and 226 single family lots. The thoughtful design lays out the lots placing higher density, residential units closer to Hillview Way with gradually less intense townhome and single family residential lots planned as the property slopes up to the east. Okay, and so some of the best laid plans essentially are the green space, uh, connectivity, uh, you got Hillview Way right here, and then you just get further down here. This is like your apartment complex type deal, and then you have your basic cul-de-sacs, attached livings and stuff like that, um, if you can see clearly. But that's essentially what they're gonna do is they're gonna put the high density housing at the edge right next to the uh, busy street that is Hillview Way. Um, yeah, and let's see. So this area was once underdeveloped by property owners who took legal action against the city of Missoula for uh, what was considered an, a special improvement district to the Hillview Way when they actually reconstructed it. They were worried about the sloping of Hillview Way as it hit uh, uh, Russell and uh, Southwest Higgins, um, essentially um, causing some crashes and cars sliding down the hill. So they had to majorly redevelop the whole entire Hillview Way which is what created this. But uh, Troy Monroe, the city engineers, talks a little bit more about the SI, SID as it pertains to this particular project. A portion of the subdivision already in the city would be contributing to that. The portion that will be annexed in from the county, although we're not expanding the district, we do have a condition that those homes pay the same, the same fee as if they were in the district. And we did work this out with the city attorney's office. Um, as far as the Rhino Road within the subdivision, it is being designed as a collector. It does have street lights, and that is being done um, by the, the developer, the installation, and then they become part of the road district, and the funding would be uh, for maintenance, and the actual electricity would be through the, the road district. It's crazy. You know, it's one of those things that uh, the Special Improvement District was kind of like their last hurrah was Hillview Way. And it was a tool that the city used to uh, regionally charge the people using the road uh, for use of the road and maintenance of the road. And, and then eventually would put into the roads district for their budget for maintenance and repairs and stuff like that. The SID was there to put money down to throw a bunch of money at the project to have the project be completed. And now it's on the people who live in the area, not to mention now the future developers using the site as well. And so as we get further into the meeting, we uh, jump into more public comments. Um, Nick Van Hole talks a little bit more about this and he talks about the overall issue that Missoula is going through in terms of all this development. There's so much that doesn't make sense about so much of this and I have to voice it. And there's a lot that's hard to swallow. First of all, the amount of units, 248 to 450 units, seems very astronomical. There's been a lot of things going around. There's been the East Missoula development coming. And yes, this is all the new housing that's going in that will inevitably go in it sometimes. But with $40 million given from the Rockefellers billionaire corporation out of New York, to build this place that was loaned by Stockman Bank and the Rockefellers are helping building this. It really makes it hard for me and for all my friends that have been driven out of here over the years because of high costs, how that's gonna help the housing situation. I look at this presentation and it says HOA. I see Wild Root, Homeowners Association, and that's supposed to help the housing situation, please. I'm all right, and so that was, uh um, Nick Van Hull, um, he doesn't think the developments are going to keep costs down. John Rimmel, land landowner in the south area of the proposed development, talks about the county road that will be developed and what he has to say about that. And I'm very pleased with the responsiveness of both the city and the developer to our concerns that 
that road might become a major um, back route in and out of this subdivision. Uh, it, because it is not up to the standards of a county road, unless you consider me running a rock rake over it a couple times a year, road improvement. Um, so I just wanted to, again, reiterate my thanks to both the city staff and to the developer for hopefully working out a solution to this um, issue, because I do think a bunch of traffic coming out that un unmaintained and unimproved road and then going up and down Whitaker would be a disaster. Okay. So, yeah, the uh, part of the proposed planning is to also double dip and dip into uh, construction of the roadway. And so that's a big part of the development movie, though. And overall, this uh, land hasn't had any value in the past as development tends to skew towards major, major city slash county corridors. And this could go on to improve roads in the Hillview Way as they plan to expand over the next 20 years. So this is gonna be a long truck, just very much like what they did over with the East Missoula addition that they're gonna be uh, working on. And while Del Vibers get to develop, we move on to our next next topic highlighting the 1.6 million dollars the city of missoula is going to launch a project off the clark fork river as they improve access to uh, the famous brennan's wave the investment per city engineers request over the years as the uh, embarkened has dealt with the growing erosion with the lack of river access being the cause of many of those issues for access slash safety uh, this was uh, proposed in the Karis park construction when it w which it went along with the updates and getting rid of the hill at Karis Park, uh, alongside with when they were re reconstructing uh, Bear Track Bridge on Higgins Avenue. This would also include river access for people with disabilities, which is the major point of the Karis project of uh, river access. So Nathan McLeod, Parks and Rec, spoke about this project as more than just an ADA accessibility project. Bears River Access is part of the larger Clark Fork River Restoration and Access Project, which seeks to restore riverbanks in downtown Missoula. In order to close and restore some areas of the riverbank, providing hardened river access in other areas is necessary. Cares Park was identified as a primary location for providing hardened river access due to the proximity to Brennan's Wave, downtown, parks and trails, and the number of events and people in the park. Yep, so they're just doing it just because it makes the most sense to do so. Not to mention this money is not only going to go to the Karis Park construction, but also improve the an, uh, a good majority of the riverbank because this is an overlaying project that also includes um, basically from Karis Park to the University, Madison Bridge, if you want to be more specific, to help uh, improve access to the river and uh, help prevent erosion and safety risks to the particular area. And as we go further down, Amber Sherrill, City Council, talks about the access currently to the river from uh, the trails. I love the fact that it's ADA accessible, but I think, you know, my, my uh, in-laws that, you know, are not, do not need any ADA accommodations couldn't get down there, right? I mean, there's lots of young kids and families and with, with young kids that can't get down to the river very easily. So. Um, I, I love this. I'm excited to vote for it. I'm excited to have this as part of uh, another amenity um, that is well thought out for our community. So thanks for your work on it, Nathan. Okay. And so that was Amber Sherrill uh, reflecting on that as well. This was a short section of the meeting since it's been on the planning phase since the bridge and was proposed and they wanted a very large ramp from the bridge to Karis at the time, but they didn't, weren't able to get it because it was just not feasible, especially as high up it was. Uh, one of the other uh, s uh, segments was the dissolving of the climate team in favor of a task force. So the climate action team for the city of Missoula was used to create these programs, net zero programs and green goals set by the city of Missoula. Mayor Andrea Davis praises the climate team um, and talks a little bit more about them. Uh, grateful and proud and pleased with the work that this energy and conservation team has helped do um, in terms of establishing the path for professional staff and of course all of the city adopted plans that set forth um, the work that, that we do as a city um, in terms of our climate work. Um, and accountability to city council and the and the public. Um, this is a, one of the tasks that I have as an executive is certainly taking a look at the workload of the organization and seeing how we can do things, how we can innovate, and how we can do things um, 
differently to achieve our goals in ways that help um, streamline some processes and take a look at our existing um, practices. And um, I did ask staff to evaluate boards and commissions. And um, because of the reasons that have been set out before you, uh, this is the recommendation that we bring forward today. Okay. And very much like uh, committees that are formed, these were formed by citizens and people and volunteers alike. And Montana James, um, Community Development Director, responds to questions uh, from council about these changes and what they plan on doing moving forward. With the combination of our now larger professional staff, the task force model, um, and our community partners that are doing this work, that that we can achieve all of this work um, effectively. And we, we hope to continue to engage folks who have been on the energy and climate team in the task force model. Um, we have a few folks uh, who are members of the energy and climate team that are now on the city's strategic implementation team as well. So we had just have so many groups that are really tackling and digging in on the work um, that it, it just has felt like this uh, appointed energy and climate team group is not getting into the same depth that these other bodies are doing. Okay. And so they're moving towards more of a, a, a public-private partnership that they've done in the past with organizations here. But Dan and Carlino is not convinced because he feels as though that they're turning off the spigot of having some uh, real public input from people about the uh, climate change issue that is affecting us. And this is what Daniel Carlino, City Council, had to say. We vote for all sorts of things that are not following climate science. And that's why we need a citizen advisory board to point that out and show us how to properly do that. And the fact that we just got rid of that, I think, was disheartening. Um, I think there's room to, you know, to still have citizens involved, of course, in better ways. But frankly, this administration and council don't follow climate science with every decision. And we could be a lot better. And, and, and to act like we're doing OK with an issue like this as it gets worse and worse, and we're living through these natural disasters, species going extinct, um, all of our health at risk is, is pretty disheartening for future generations and for people living right now. It's never enough until we've stabilized the Earth's climate and got us off of fossil fuels. And I see this decision today as a big step backwards. Yep. And that's the unfortunate nature of a lot of these things is that, you know, small local government, um, you know, we've had said, We've essentially set down the uh, the boundaries and exactly what we want to do, some of the initiatives that we're moving forward. And I won't bore you the details, but these are the uh, consolidated boards that make it easier to adjust based on initiatives. The team was dissolved and can be easily reformed like it was in the first place based on new interest and drive. And so the probably one of the, most likely one of the reasons why this kind of curtailed towards the end is because most of the people who are on the climate and team it kind of like evolved more into the, the city work, more the nonprofit sector, what already works with the city. And so essentially they already had the organization, the people in place. But this also uh, kind of goes counter to the point that some people who are in the community who want to get involved can't necessarily do it with the climate action team. And they would have to, in some ways, have to be more voluntary through the, uh, these task force. So anyways, we're gonna move on to Public Works, which they're planning a city contract with the WGM Group for the Professional Services to develop construction plans for South Avenue from Reserve to 36th Avenue. This basically is a bike pad project that covers the length of Reserve where Larchmont Golf Course lays. This is from Federal Build Back Better in terms of updating the safety of this section of streets. Also, your water rates are gonna go be increasing, and so they're talking, they spoke a little bit more about the increase. I spoke about this uh, as well, but this is gonna be the first of three years worth of annual increases for consideration. The main takeaway is that Missoula owned water company wants to have sewer main replacement programs to keep them at cost and not have to bid them out to higher and slower replacement uh, ser uh, services. Uh, finally, the long range transportation, transportation plan for Missoula was presented by Aaron Wilson, which I they have clips for this one. And Aaron Wilson is the engineer for the city of Missoula who has spoken in the past about many projects in the downtown quarters and through all this additional money through federal grants. Uh, Queue to impact the downtown and downtown and hip, strip, hip strips, including the public transit, uh, which took up the meat the uh, meat of the meeting. Um, Aaron Wilson talks about the long-range transportation plan in this clip. 
looking at projects, but we have a slightly larger planning area where we're looking at what sorts of growth and transportation issues are happening and how that's influencing the urban area. And, and that's that kind of orange outer boundary on this map. So it's a pretty big, it goes basically from Clinton to the Y um, and then uh, the Y down to Lolo in the South. So pretty big area. Um, and then we update that project list every four years um, to align with our priorities, address the needs that we're seeing, um, and has to be constrained with those revenue costs. So that's a federal requirement. So we know we have a limited amount of money. What projects do we think we can get done within that budget? Yep, and so as you can see here, their, their priority is in the blue. And then you have the uh, boundary of the Missoula uh, metropolitan areas uh, planning area in which how they could connect everything. And so. Uh, as we move further into this meeting, I've spoken about this project from the downtown corridors to East Missoula Connection that just got the $24 million grant awarded to improve Broadway as it goes under the railroad uh, bridge and requires a lot of work to expand for opening vehicles um, and also not uh, stopping trains altogether. So they have to have a whole construction for an additional sidetrack so it can move around it. So Mountain Line is yet another one of the big proponents of these plans as they plan to adopt uh, and, and change some of those routes to maximize use and add a potential new Route 15 into those plans. Jordan Hess, former mayor and newest general manager for Mountain Line, spoke on this particular item and this is what he had to say. Uh, we think it's really important that we plan together, that we collaborate with city and county, and that we um, ultimately uh, move together as a community. Transit, as you all know, is a solution to many of the issues our community faces, whether it's, um, whether it's our goals around equity. The city bus is a great equalizer in our society and, and really um, helps meet a lot of our equity goals. It is a great solution to housing. Uh, it is, um, helps chip away at the second largest household cost, which is transportation. And of course, it's a great solution to our climate crisis. Um, so we're we're glad to be part of this this planning process. Uh, Thomas Whitman. From All right, so that was uh, Jordan Ness, uh, general manager of the uh, Mountain Line. Uh, Thomas from Mountain Line spoke about these uh, scenarios being proposed for routes and usage. Uh, and uh, be warned, most of the stuff that they plan on uh, uh, um, dealing with is essentially the uh, Route 8 a lot of the area in the Franklin to the Fort area and also the South Hills. That we listen to the key things that the community has told us in terms of what the priorities are. At the same time, and looking at what happened as a part of the pandemic, ridership growth has been uneven in terms of how ridership has come back after the pandemic. Uh, certain, you know, certain neighborhoods where there's been additional density, you know, ridership is really coming back and we're seeing, you know, buses that are really full in certain areas such as the Rattlesnake or South Hills or Target Range, the response has been a little bit more muted. And so one of the key questions that we wanted to use this as an opportunity is like, what do we do about this? What, is, what does this mean for us in Mountain Line to be able to enhance mobility and maintain mobility uh, within Missoula? All right. And so as we go further into the meeting, the, some of the proposed areas and changes are to Route 8, 9, and 12, reducing uh, the duplication of services in some areas. A uh, big part of it is that because 8 kind of intersects with 2, but also intersects with uh, Route number 1, and those are the more uh, fast routes throughout the city of Missoula. Most of what I've seen is that there seems to be a trend between downtown and the Southgate Mall. So that tends to be like the main uh, uh, brunt of where all the... Uh, Let's see, hold on a second. Let me see if I can find it. The brunt of everything that's going on in terms of transportation. So let me see where I have to be. I lost my place. Um, you know, most of the goals, Tom, uh, and, and, and for solutions, these are, uh, one, these are one of two scenarios. And so in this clip, I'm gonna show you the first scenario in which they'll be talking about the development um, for these route changes. Sources from lower producing you know, areas and lower producing times to address some of the, the growth that we're seeing and doing it with in one scenario with on-demand services and in the other scenario without on-demand services. So I want to walk through some of the major changes that we want to see or we anticipate as a part of this. The biggest element with the first scenario, the scenario one looks at uh, transitioning service in the target range and the South Hills areas from fixed route service from a bus that comes every hour or you know, every 30 minutes, depending on the time of day, to on-demand services. And so what is on-demand service? It's a smaller vehicle where you can either call or use an app 
to get a ride to or from any place within that zone. Yep, and so that's where you see those mini mountain lion buses that are that are usually painted white vans and stuff like that to help with that. Um, and you know, also uh, he talks about another scenario um, in which they'll talk a little bit more about the major changes right now. A ridership routes such as Route 12 and Route 8, and in this case, you know, we'd be looking at also reallocating Route 12's resources to operate um, you know, to and to to operate you know to consolidate the services route seven in this case would be extended from walmart to serve the you know the garrett 55th and 23rd loop that route 12 currently you know provides so that this neighborhood will continue to have service you know into downtown missoula but at the same time the patty canyon and the whitaker you know neighborhoods would no longer have service as a result of this change or all right and so there's Definitely a lot of major changes that they're proposing right now. And so far, this is just informational type stuff. And they're f trying to figure out exactly what the best solution for all this stuff. Um, and the takeaway is uh, the need for larger populations in areas that would justify their use for long term and how frequently the bus is used. Data collected, the mountain line has already benefited the overall use of the buses and their routes, far be it for the folks who depend on services um, in areas that don't get traffic, but service uh, continue based on requests because Mountain Line has small buses for areas that normally cannot serve a handful of people. Target Range and South Hill seems to be on the chopping block for routes in these particular scenarios. But so far, you, uh, these items are information only and will require more data and input from you. Yes, you. Go to engagemissoula.com or ci.missoula.mt.us and you can use the Mountain Line's website, mountainline.com, to sign up for their newsletter about upcoming changes based on holidays and more. Uh, so now we're going to jump right into housing redevelopment and community planning. Um, asking for your help for the future phase two of Railroad Park property. So this is essentially where the Johnson Street Shelter is and they're looking to sunset this particular project. But for right now, they're looking to uh, expand some of the funds, um, especially for second year um, uh, operations of the Johnson Street Shelter. So here's Emily Armstrong with Community Development. Between the City of Missoula and the Pavarello Center will be a two-year operational contract. And the purpose of that is um, really twofold. The primary or the first first main reason is um, to bring us more closely in alignment with that resolution that um, Michael just mentioned from MRA, Resolution 8729, that was passed last September um, and gave us a, a three-year, basically, um, lead-up to um, achieve a goal of completing site preparation and site planning for the Johnson Street property within three years. All right. And so within those three years, they're looking to get funded for the next two years because now we've just spent the first year with the emergency levy that helped pay for that. And so far, they're, what they're looking to do is this is mostly to curb the use of the site in long term as a way to plan to for the closure of the site and kind of put the city's feet to the flames to handle the housing situation in Missoula for those folks who are unhoused, especially those who are frequently using the Johnson Street Shelter. Uh, Serena Azur Kurstad, Community Development, talks about contracts, and this is what she had to say. This contract focuses on two outcomes. The first outcome is done in a graduated manner. In the first six months of the contract, the contractor will build program capacity, staff capacity, and a tracking system to monitor the number of guests who move through the Johnson Street Shelter and out to temporary or permanent housing solutions. And then in the second months of the contract, um, we assign a number to that. It'll be six guests per month that will move through the shelter and out to housing solutions. And then in the second year of the contract, that's graduated up to nine guests per month that will move through the shelter and out to housing solutions. Okay, so if we were to like run the numbers, that's essentially if it's nine guests a month, you can get up to 90 guests, uh, well, more like 108 guests for the 12 months. Uh, towards the second year of operations under 12 guests may not seem like a lot, but um, overall the amount of homelessness that have used the site, have the used Johnson Street Shelter and have been kind of monitored throughout the years can range into between 400 and 600 uh, homeless people at any given time in the city of Missoula. Not to mention, we also have that growing population of car homeless where they live in their car and you, you, you can't be entirely sure whether or not they, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those weird kind of situations and it's same old same old but mostly to figure out the final push 
of the site with plenty of time to close the site within the next two to three years uh, with the two years of funding on the table. So Erin Pian Community Development talk, uh, phones in about the money that is going towards this and this is what she had to say. Um, the second year operations is contingent on second year funding allocated by city council through the normal budget process. Um, so what this does is it, it doesn't guarantee funding for year two, but it does just allow the POV to operate with a bit more surety under the expectations in the contract. And so the, the operational expectations will carry forward, but the budget still has to be adopted and allocated by council for that second year of funding to carry forward. I also wanted to point- right. And so we'll move on to our next quote. Um, those were the, if the budget didn't pass, so they would essentially have the 30 day notice to transition out of the Johnson Street shelter. And overall, the biggest question is where would these people go? Because they'd either get uh, another year or not, but not answer on future sites. So Emily talks about the people using the shelter and it's not just the same people using the shelter. Um. This is something that is already happening. There are people who are uh, who are already moving out of shelter toward housing solutions at the same time that there are new people who are using the shelter who haven't before. So just a reminder that I think it's easy to think about our houseless population and, and shelter guests as kind of a stagnant group of uh, you know, 100, 150 um, at the shelter, but really it's a really dynamic group of people. There are some people who are there for longer periods of time, but there's also a lot of movement that happens in and out of the shelter. And so this is um, our attempt to be able to better better track that, better understand it, better give credit to the, you know, the Pavarello Center and the work they're doing to support that and to recognize that um, a lot of that movement is also a full community effort. The Pavarello staff might be part of moving someone towards a housing solution. The homeless outreach team might, um, Hope Rescue Mission and their staff, Salvation Army, you know, there's a number of partners, all of our coordinated entry partners who are all working on housing solutions for folks. So um, that is a piece of this conversation as well. Okay. Thanks. Um, and so that is the last quote that I have for you guys to, uh, and then however you shake it, there's a lot of programs in place, but shelters will shrink within the next couple of years. Even on top of that, side note, uh, temporary safe outdoor space, which is behind the county jail that used to be by the old Walmart, which, which is off of Brooks 93, um, that one has their funding sunsetting by 2025, and it is run through uh, Sovereign Hope Church and the United Way of Missoula. So up next, we have some fun videos for you guys uh, featured from the summer camps over the summer. And when I come back, we're gonna talk about some movies. I'm tired, I need to go to bed. Hey. Skibbity toilet, level 10 guy at Riz. Phantom Tax, Ohio. Skibbity Toilet, Level 10 Gaia Riz, Kaisana, Skibbity Toilet. What are you talking about? What the? You! <laughs> what is going on? What the Zeta? <laughs> what the Riz? Sigma Ohio? What the Skibbity Ohio Riz? You're not even being a beta right now! No, he's not even being an alpha right now. You're. <gasps> You? Alpha. The Sigma. No, you're the Sigma, Sigma, Sigma! Fine. Take him to Ohio. Genshin Impact is an open world action RPG video game available on Android, <laughs> iOS, PlayStation, and PlayStation 4. We've been trying to contact you in your car's extended warranty for quite some time. Girl toy. Well, well, now there is. Yeah! You will never get away with being an inferior toy. Them all. Robots. Ask your parents to buy them 
for you. It's never bothered me. Robots fighting the evil Skelly Men. You never steal our Bubble Hill, Skelly Men. <laughs> I will take over the Bubble Hills. Go, Go Robots! MCAT Animation Drop In Workshops every Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m., located in the Missoula Public Library, 455 East Main Street. I'll get you next time, Robots! Next time! Go, Robots! All right, we are back. Let's talk about uh, some movies that are coming out this weekend. Kicking things off is, well, you know, like if you go on vacation, you meet some nice people, they're probably not nice. Boom, there's a horror movie. We're jumping right into a movie that was based off a, uh, that was basically a reboot that was made two years ago. Have you ever had an overbearing friend that knows it all and things seem to go wrong. This movie is based on those urges to be like, I'll stay home and not hang out with people. Why go anywhere? Because people are just gonna kill you anyways. And this movie kind of shows the meeting a nice family and jo um, uh, um, joining vacations. Um, that's something you should never do simply because of the awkward phase alone. Uh, bypass all that, you will bring a guy who is a pathological liar and suffers from a permanent Mondays and tries to beat people up and punish their kid in front of you, making you glad you never hit your kid, the movie. Uh, then we got uh, the, killing, the Killer's Game. Imagine you are a uh, badass assassin who wants to go out in a blaze of glory when you suffer from Walter White cancer. Uh, live your life to the fullest uh, as no amount of plot cancer can save you from a group of assassins that hired, that you hired a hit on your yourself because you'd rather roll the dice on uh, the only family you ever knew, trained killers. Enjoy a typical trope of, he's sick, how bad can he be, to very bad, we made a terrible mistake. Um, from the uh, other good killers comes, I have one last chance to make some money. I'm not as bad as those killers. Um, to, you killed me! Thank you. Enjoy those kinds of things in movies that have probably have some kind of twist that they lied about this test. And then he's just like, uh oh, I guess I wasn't dying this whole time. I have a lot more to live for. Or maybe he was poisoned and has to get an answer towards the end of the movie, but it was like, whatever. But there's always more to a story than a character just kind of wanders into situations. But, you know, not Hollywood. Um, and then there's, of course, this movie that's coming out is, you know, you probably heard of Matt Walsh. She did the whole, like, um, you know, what is a woman? And now he's doing a movie called Am I Racist? A uh, question on everyone's, every white person's mind because their existence is made to question this as of late and Matt Walsh is going to make money to uh, basically make money on gotcha journalism in this follow-up to What is a Woman? His next movie, Why Am I Annoying? Where he questions people who are just trying to get to work and have no time for his uh, coercive questioning. Enjoy a journalist who spends more time being a character than showing any. Uh, basically, this movie exposes the Jedi program such, uh, slash the DEI, the diversity, equity, inclusion that happened during the pandemic. Every generation has their own circle of diversity inclusion. My first uh, social uh, agenda item was PC culture and freedom fries and all that kind of stuff. Expect more of that when there is a round, another round with the, the new Matt Walsh character capitalizing on this, and you thought movies were only remakes out of there. Wake up, society. <laughs> so even like documentaries kind of feel like they could be reboots for the most, tar most part, but as we go further on, we're gonna show you brand new dubbing stuff from the 1954 film, Target Earth. Huh. Well, well, what is it? Are you still jealous of her neighbors? Uh, well, no, not exactly. They only have red curtains. <laughs> and we have like tan curtains. Would you like me to get you red curtains for you? Oh no, it's just not the right time right now. I gotta get more time. So I can use that time. Well, if anything, I could always help you with that time. Oh no, uh, maybe later. 
Oh, well, you're right, fine, that's fine, that's perfectly good. I'm fine with that decision that you just made in front of my face, you know. Let's, um, not talk about... Let me in, it's me, come on. Oh, perfect distraction. I just got paperwork from the office. Oh, my OCD thanks and you. I helped. Come on, let's go grab a drink. Oh, I'm going to label the crap out of these files. Oh, you don't have to close those curtains. Uh, fine, it doesn't matter. I don't want to see those red curtains anyways. While we were at the store, I got all sorts of things. Oh, good. We got plenty of supplies to last us, I, I guess, the night. Well, you know, in this best time, we got to cut loose. You know how it is? Oh, I'm ready to cut loose. My ears are burning. Uh, Dan, I was wondering, why didn't you bring me files? Well, I was hoping maybe that you guys could uh, share. That would be very, uh, not so great. Uh, what, uh, so embarrassing. Maybe I should have let her file with me. Yeah, those red curtains again. Uh, you know, I'm getting really sick and tired of you feeling guilty about those files. You know, it's just not the principle of the matter. I want those files for myself. And then Dan, he's like, oh, you can file too. Well, I don't see why you can't just share in the duties of filing. I have a very elaborate, color-coded system that puts each letter with a color. I don't care much for this label talk. You just don't get it. This is a very intricate system, and the only thing I feel comfortable doing is labeling things... Oh, well, maybe you could organize your attitude of yours, I tell you what. Well, I did. It's organized under anxiety. Oh, you really think that you can just waltz in here and know exactly oh, what's going on? Oh, here we go again. I never know what's going on. I ever, ever, ever. Well, I give you a syllabus every week outlining my details on exactly the curriculum that we're planning, and yet you don't seem to read them or care. For someone who reads the newspaper, you don't read much at all, do you? Well, I prefer to read things that are interesting. Uh, 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 you bastard. Sorry, that was rude. Uh, yeah. Oh, you mess with the bull, you get the horns. Hey, what's going on? Oh, God, again? Well, you two just kiss and make up already? Oh, should I... Should I... I guess... Uh. Oh, those red curtains. They just bother me so... What are we going to do? Where are we going? We don't need red curtains. Believe that. All right, let's jump into some news items that are happening in and around the Missoula and Montana area. Uh, Montana Free Press, I covered a couple of their issues with the within the schools across Montana, and without financial intervention, the public school system isn't going to get any better. From wages and high cost of living to plans in the state not keeping up with the increasing population, that doesn't always mean increased taxes, uh, tax bases for those and other services that were built on these communities over the decades. As many districts face budget cuts and teach shortages, lawmakers are crafting potential short-term fixes to consider during the 2025 legislative session, uh, said uh, Representative Dave ben Be Betty, the Republican Chair of Education Interim Budget Committee. The But the real action on the state's uh, funding formula will be during the upcoming uh, decennial study of school funding. Uh, he spoke at the panel for Montana Free Press held over the weekend, and uh, COVID was a major spending cliff that many public schools dealt with when creating programs to get kids access to education from home. But as the times went back to normal, schools and other places had to deal with for shortfalls for these budget issues. So essentially, they had a lot of budget from the federal government, and then they shrank, but they didn't really shrink uh, with personnel. Bedley said that he is working on legislation that would allocate $50 million to $75 million to help districts catch up with increasing starting teachers' pay. Um, Missoula dealt with those budget shortfalls by proposing the arts be cut, to which people came together and fought for those jobs. Something tells me that a billion dollar surplus from last year's legislation after could have been used. Um, Another item that came light earlier this week was the seven million federal dollars John Tester secured for the Missoula Fire Department. Not to be confused with the levy that was passed over the summer. This one will be used to hire more firefighter, fire, firefighters and other services. In July, Senator John Chester's Fire Grants and Safe, uh, Safety Act was signed into law. The legislation reauthorized the Safer 
and Assistance for Firefighter Grants, AFG, through 2028. The AFG and SAFER are the main sources of federal funding for firefighters to help departments purchase equipment, increase staffing, and are particularly important to small rural and volunteer fire departments across Montana. And last month, Tester secured more than $300,000 to uh, in, in assistance to firefighters grants for fire service training school affiliated with Montana State University. Tester, he does serve as the chair of Congressional Fire Service uh, Caucus. Uh, as a senior member of the Appropriation Committee, he also secured $648 million for AFG, the assistance for firefighters grants, and SAFER in the 2024 government funding bill. So Chief Hughes said that the fire grant will also help the department use some of the levy funding for new fire station. Quote, this grant will pick up the first three years of funding for those individuals and allow us to shift some of those monies around to get construction of station six underway sooner than later, end quote. KVGO was where I got the quote, as the story has been on the back burner for some time as Missoula was dealing with the budget shortfalls as departments are dealing with tourism seasons in our communities that demand more services in both a growing and high traffic city that is Missoula. Made in Montana just gets a little bit harder as the Stillwater mine lays off 700 workers. Uh, Sabane Stillwater, the uh, South African company that operates the nation's only major uh, palladium mine, so essentially palladium is the stuff that you put in your teeth filling, it helps convert car, um, it's a, it's con a catala catala catalyst converter, which converts harmful gases and exhaust fumes to less harmful substances, dental fillings, and of course, jewelry. Um, in its letter, the company blamed their financial woes on current uh, palladium prices, now below $1,000 an ounce versus $2,300 about, an ounce, about two years ago. Uh, the international mining conglomerate that purchased Stillwater Mine in 2017 also has operated in South Africa, Europe, and Australia, according to, according to Montana Free Press. Palladium, um, uh, part of these efforts right now is that the uh, um, Senator uh, Steve Daines and John Tester efforts to include tax credit uh, to uh, help this mining operation take into full effect, but also a ban on palladium um, from Russia, which has been flooding the market. Um, so it's, it's very interesting. Uh, this, uh, this will cut jobs in Stillwater by 13% overall and 16% overall mining jobs in the state of Montana. And so, so those are some of your news tidbits. As we go into the weekend, it is Friday the 13th. Um, I looked around and didn't see too many of the uh, unlucky stuff that is happening for tonight. I didn't even see any kind of weird uh, um, uh, events that are helping to celebrate Friday the 13th. So we're going to just jump in um, and just talk about some generic events. Uh, kicking things off is Missoula Breastfeeding Conference. Outpatient support from the Providence St. Patch Hospital Conference Center is uh, supporting pediatric practices, sensory experience of a newborn, low milk supply, breast milk, and infection protection and wildfire smoke, pregnancy, birth, and feeding outcomes. And there are scholarships available, and this is kicking off right now. Excel Level 1 Lifelong Learning, Set, Lifelong Learning Center is doing a bunch of these night school classes. And you can stop lying on your resume and make this thing happen in a series of night school style classes to enrich your brain for better op job opportunities without getting a, into college debt. Uh, Stroller Strides Mommy and Me workout classes at Bonner Park every uh, most daily mornings at 9.30 a.m. at Bonner. Uh, Missoula Butterfly House and Insectarium open hours at 10 a.m. Uh, family fun time. If you're, it's getting colder outside, uh, YMCA is under construction. Uh, Get Air, Roots, Acro Sports Summer, and Mismo Gymnastics always are a great way to have some indoor fun for kids as the weather gets a little bit colder outside. Missoula Food Bank meal distribution uh, open daily, uh, but today uh, open daily at 10 a.m. Uh, limited hours on certain days, but for the most part, it should be open for many of those services, including the Empower Place, which is a mixture of science, uh, library, and community uh, space for a lot of people to gather and hang out, especially for the kids. Lunch at the Missoula Senior Center. It's a great opportunity for seniors uh, 55 and older to get nutritious food, um, meet and greet, piece of, play some pinnacle, and go to one of the best dance floors in the city of Missoula. Yarns and Watercolor, uh, fourth floor of the Missoula Public Library. A uh, great opportunity for people to get involved with one or two of the others. Um, All Abilities Art Club, this is based, this is for people with Americans with Disabilities uh, who want to uh, be a part of, uh, not necessarily Americans, but that's ADA accessible folks to be able to uh, uh, express themselves using art. And it's at BASE, which is a great organization here in town that helps people with uh, physical or mental disabilities. Hands-on Science. 
Brain Week at Spectrum. So Spectrum is doing a kids activity starting at 2 p.m. this afternoon on the second floor. Uh, Molly, the Native American Revolution Lecture. Molly is an organization that does night classes at the University of Montana without actually being fully enrolled as a student. Starting at 3 p.m., the Native American Revolution at Missoula College on September uh, from 3 to 5 p.m. today. The American Revolution was a war in which Natives fought and died in great numbers that unfolded deep in the indigenous interior and transformed the continue, uh, continental balance of power. So you'll learn a little bit more about their perspective during the, uh, the American Revolution. A Taste of the 19th Century, Traveler's Rest State Park is doing a dinner inspired of the Lewis and Clark Expedition, craft cocktails by Lolo Creek Disti uh, Distillery. So I'm kind of taken out from that fact, but fine beer and wine from Lolo Peak Brewery Explore the historic uh, demonstrations, guided tours, and music by Whaling Aaron Jennings. Bid on dis delicious desserts, adv adventure packages, art supporting events, and more. And all this goes to support the Travelers Rest State Park. Uh, exhibition opening duet at uh, Radius Clayworks is a tremendously honor to present a new works by two esteemed Seattle-based artists, Carol Guthrow and Patty w Warshina. Uh, both expression and biomorphic sculptures celebrating the potency of of transportation, nature, and in ceramics. Um, uh, Patty is a so talk about social change, always surprising figurative sculptures speak to uh, absurdity and fo foible of human behavior. Their work uh, is seeing in tribute to the art's power and poignant poignancy. Um, D and D guy uh, guild for adults. If you're interested in doing some Dungeons and Dragons, Missoula Public Library does an online thing at 6 p.m. You can go to the Missoula Library's website to get involved. Spruce Alley Sally Bluegrass at Cranky Sam Public House tonight at 7 p.m. Benevolence at the Old Post tonight at 7 p.m. Um, karaoke at the Jack Saloon at 7 p.m. Let's Go Party. It's going to be a drag show at the uh, Zootown Arts Community Center starting at 7 p.m. Uh, it's a new twist this year. It's the annual uh, Gay Big Sky Pageant. Dress to impress and get ready to dance the night away. Missoula Home Chrome Comedy Competition. So if you're a comedian who is uh, interested in learning about comedy in Missoula, the Roxy at 8 p.m. They're doing a competition starting at 8 p.m. at the Roxy. Justin Harris and the Pocket Aces of Buckley Storms at Monks playing some rock music there. Joan Zen is going to be playing at Union Club at 9 p.m. Justin Harris and the Pocket Aces is going to be playing at Sunrise Saloon tonight at 9.30 and wrapping up your Saturday night at the Top Hat. Last of the Nobodies is going to be playing some hip hop there. And then as we jump into Saturday, we got our markets and such, but also on, on, on top of that, we're also doing spontaneous construction, which is the home resource after party at 5 p.m. Uh, spontaneous construction is an annual event that is hosted at uh, um, home resources and invites organizations to kind of uh, be creative with engineering and mixing old and recycled materials to make designs and sculptures, which will be hosted at the Missoula Public Library for exhibits for the next First Friday. It's always a fun thing to do. And as we jump into fall, Turner Farms uh, here in Missoula, which is just up target range, uh, 9.30 a.m. Uh, on Saturday. Help us welcome the fall at the farm. First pumpkins are coming in the field and the mums are flowering and the farm is still looking like fall. Local roasted hot coffee, mini donuts, and of course, lots of farm animals. Uh, kids Fall Chess Tournament at the Missoula Public Library sign up starts at around 9 to 9.30 um, and you get to kick it off at the Missoula uh, at a chess tournament starting at 10 a.m. at Missoula Public Library. You can inquire uh, at any time at the Public Library or you can come in that morning. Uh, then you also have a story time at 10.30 a.m. at Missoula Public Library uh, every Saturday at 10.30 a.m. Great way for kids to learn to read. Harvesting Your Garden Seminar. Karis Nursery is hosting a seminar about harvesting your garden. This event is free and open to the public in all ages. Check the website to learn more at Karis Nursery. Moon Round of Homestead is the, doing their regular walking tours. Great opportunity for people to know about Missoula history and the homestead, which was uh, basically uh, gifted to the city of Missoula to preserve for future generations. Museum tours, as always, every Saturday at 11 a.m. at the Missoula Art Museum is a great opportunity for people to learn about the arts and also have tours. Uh, Rocky Mountain Garden Grand Opening, uh, featuring over 20 distinct growing spaces. The garden showcases the endless diversity of gardening styles and plant species. This is a brand new garden right next to the fairgrounds, right next to the Butterfly House. Um, it starts at 11 a.m. It's going to be the christening grand opening of this. You've, you might have seen it when you went to the Western Montana State Fair. You saw a bunch of plants and stuff like that, but this is their official grand opening. They're going to be doing that starting at 11 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, MCAT Saturday drop-ins, as always, every Saturday from three, uh, from 1 to 3 p.m., MCAT is doing our Saturday drop-ins. Kids get to do stop animation with Legos, 
toys, all sorts of kind of cool figurines that we have here for that uh, environment. So great opportunity. It's a drop in free for kids age roughly eight to 14. Great opportunity for that as well. So make your space electronics. Uh, learn the basics of electronics using Arduino device. Arduino combines software coding with hardware to do a, a wide variety of things. It's a great way to learn basics of circuitry, coding, and more. Starting at 3 p.m. here at the public library at the Makerspace. And then as we jump into the night, we have some uh, concerts and stuff. So Canta Brazil is going to be an imagination brewing company. Uh, Bear Bait Dance is doing a dance show at the Ten Spoon Reiner at 6 p.m. Saturday night, uh, 7 p.m. The Wilma Theater is going to be the Mother Mother at the Wilma. Uh, starting at 7 p.m. Then we have Missoula's High Frequency Dance Polarity uh, uh, aptly known as Vibe. It's going to be at Sacred Alley at 7 p.m. They're doing some movement. Uh, it's a whole dance thing and the healing power of dance. And then we got country music at the Jack Saloon, Nashville 406. Uh, the Byrne Brothers is going to be at Longstaff House playing some acoustic music starting at 7 p.m. Uh, Sleeping Jesus uh, from Winona, Minnesota. And Apocalypse Stick uh, is going to be uh, Rock at the Zach. Starting at 7.30 p.m. on Saturday, uh, Grant Atreicus, not Green Day, uh, is going to be live at Monk starting at 8 p.m. Solid, uh, solid Sound Karaoke at West Adelaide's Fun Center at 9 p.m. Um, Blue Collar Band, 9 p.m. at Union Club. As we get into the fall season, Union Club usually doubles up for a new band on Friday and a new band on Saturday every weekend throughout the school year. Mark Du Bois and Crossroads is going to be at uh, Sunray Saloon at 9.30 p.m. on Saturday. And then wrapping it up for your... Uh, uh, Saturday night is Chris, DJ Chris Moon at Badlander at 10 p.m. Trout Basket at the Top Hat playing some blue, bluegrass music at 10.15 p.m. I do have a little bit more time, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about Sunday. If you're interested in learning about knife and tool sharpening workshop, Missoula Urban Dem Demonstration Project, otherwise known as MUD, is hosting class at 10 a.m. Women Bike Missoula, Stories and Stones uh, ride. And so this is a ride towards the Stories and Stones, which kicks off from 12 to 4 p.m. What felt like a long time ago will bring back the community members to take, a long, uh, take on the role of historian and present on the history of influential people in Missoula right next to their grave. Uh, admission is free with uh, food slash beverages available for purchases. This is a walk-in tour. It's sponsored through the generous donations. Guests are encouraged to bring chairs to use while listening to different presenters. Sunday Streets, um, Sunday Streets is a great way to close off streets and also have a big event, and they're going to be doing this at 1220 Vine Street at the University District. It is, encourages all ages and all abilities to be active, support local businesses, and rethink how our community can be more livable. We also have a craft swap at the Muslim Public Library, and if you want to do some crafts and swap some crafts, show up a little bit earlier to present them to the public library, and then this event is a perfect opportunity for crafters of all kinds to exchange supplies, share ideas, and discover new hobbies. String Orchestra of the Rockies, they're doing their season opener at the UM Recital Hall at 4 p.m. Lainey Wilson is going to be playing at the University of Montana with Jackson Dean and Zach Topp at 7 p.m. Uh, Desert Family is going to be playing um, at the Zach, some rock music there at 7.30 on Sunday. Then we got comedy at 8 p.m. at VFW and wrapping things up for your Sunday is rock and karaoke at the Sunrise Saloon at 8.30 p.m. So that pretty much does it for me this morning. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Um, take care and it's Friday the 13th. Ooh.